If you clicked on this video, you're probably familiar with PCIe and M.2 slots for storage and expansion, but you might be overlooking this, which is also an M.2 slot, but a little bit different. It's often just referred to as the Wi-Fi slot, but it can actually do a lot more than that. And today, I'm going to try putting a few different modules in this often overlooked socket to try and get the most performance out of this PC. So stay tuned. Recently, I was working on this HP Elite Desk 800G3 Mini, and sadly one of the Wi-Fi antennas had completely been ripped off. Now this wasn't a big deal because I typically use wired ethernet, but it was kinda sad just looking at the poor little Wi-Fi card with only one cable connected. But this kinda got me thinking about how as much as I love finding the most value in used computers, I've possibly been overlooking a great opportunity. This Wi-Fi slot is technically an M.2 E key slot. You're probably familiar with M and B keyed M.2 sockets. The M key slots are mostly used for NVMe SSDs and are what you see on most modern motherboards. And B keyed M.2 slots are typically used for M.2 SATA SSDs, like this one here on my Geekcom Mini IT12. The E keyed socket that we're talking about today isn't just limited to wireless cards. It can support up to two PCIe by one links, USB 2.0, and a few other interfaces, but there is a huge emphasis here on the word can. Not all M.2e sockets are equal, just like how you can often find PCIe by 16 slots that are actually only wired up as by 8 or by 4. It's up to the motherboard manufacturer to decide what all pins and interfaces should be wired up and active, so this makes things a little bit tricky. Some older and cheaper wireless cards might only use USB 2.0, and newer wireless cards might actually use the CNVI interface. If either of those are the case, then the socket might not support PCIe at all, which makes it pretty much useless for anything other than Wi-Fi. Fortunately, it's fairly easy to see what the socket is capable of using something like Hardware Info 64 on Windows or LSPCI in Linux, and I'll show you that here in a bit. Okay, so really quick, while I'm editing this video, I realized I forgot to talk about whitelisting because some PC manufacturers will in fact whitelist only certain cards to work with their motherboards. I have seen a lot of posts that claim that manufacturers are whitelisting when in fact it's just that slot doesn't support PCIe, but there are examples of motherboards whitelisting only certain Wi-Fi cards to work in M.2 E key slots. So make sure and just Google your motherboard or PC ahead of time and just know it is a risk and something you might run into. All right, back to the video. Now, fortunately, the e keyed M.2 slot here actually does support one lane of PCI Gen 2, which means we should be able to use quite a few different modules in here. But what options are there for the e key? Well, before we talk about that, I want to take just a second to talk about the sponsor of today's video, which is no one, because it's actually just brought to you by my awesome patrons and YouTube members. If you want to get some more Hardware Haven content, like some behind the scenes content, or just early access to videos, you can spend as little as a dollar a month to become a patron or YouTube member and get quite a few little perks and also help support me as I make these videos. Also, if you can't afford that or don't want to, no worries, I totally get it. But if you do want to spend a dollar to help support the channel, it's awesome, I really appreciate it. And yeah, go check that out. All right, back to the video. So what can this slot be used for? Well, if it typically uses PCIe for wireless networking, then wired networking should definitely be an option. So I picked up this two and a half gigabit ethernet adapter. I'm a huge fan of two and a half gigabit, and I think this could be perfect for something like this mini PC if you wanted to use it as a home server. Even if you're not storing a ton of data on this little guy, there's a good chance you might be accessing media or other files from a NAS, and two and a half gigabit is great for speeding that up. M.2 connections are obviously used for storage, but not so much with the E key modules. Even if you could find an E keyed SSD, which I haven't, you could possibly still run into issues booting from it. But I did pick up a dual SATA port module, which could be great for adding a few more SATA ports to a DIY NAS build of sorts. There are plenty of other cool modules out there, and you should actually check out this video here from Peter Brocky that I came across, where he goes through quite a few options. However, the third module that I'm gonna check out today is a bit different. This is a Coral M.2 accelerator 
which features a Google Edge TPU machine learning accelerator. This can be used to accelerate a lot of different machine learning tasks, but I'm going to try it out today with something called Frigate. Frigate is an open source NVR that supports AI object detection, and this is hopefully going to make that possible. In my opinion, this is by far the coolest and most practical option for something like this HP Mini PC, as you could install Linux on an SSD, add in a mechanical hard drive to store all your camera footage, and then use the Coral TPU to accelerate object detection, and for pretty cheap. I bought this HP for around $50, and the Coral TPU was only another $30 or so. Toss in an SSD and or hard drive and you could have an NVR with AI object detection for around 100 bucks. That's not bad. However, that's assuming I can get it all working, but I feel pretty confident today, so let's go over to the desk and start checking these out. All right, so I'm here at my desk. Sorry for the poor production quality. I have a camera behind me. I have the little fuzzy guy on here, a whole bunch of junk here, and I forgot to start recording and started doing some stuff, and I just don't wanna to have to go back and do it all over again. So we have the HP Elite Desk 800G3 Mini right here opened up, and I actually went ahead and put the two and a half gigabit ethernet adapter in. Um, I did pop out this display port on the back, and I was hoping I'd be able to mount this up somehow, but it doesn't fit because of the screw holes here on the bottom, it's hard to see probably, but it doesn't quite fit so it's just gonna kind of dangle out the back. And that's where we're at. So I'm gonna go ahead and wire this up really quick so that we can test it out. I have Windows installed on this NVMe SSD here. All right, we got everything wired up. Time to hit the start button and see what happens. I'm gonna hit F9 here. All right, we'll just select the SSD just to make sure we're on Windows. Okay, and I'm gonna open up Hardware Info 64, before we actually try out our network interface. And if we go up here to bus and expand this, we should be able to eventually find, uh, we're at, probably under this PCI Express route. Hey, look, there we go. We have our Realtek Semiconductor RTL 8125, two and a half gigabit ethernet controller. And if we click on this PCI Express root port, we can see some interesting things here. We can see the version of PCIe, so 3.0, and the maximum link width, which is by one, which is what we'd expect with this M.2 E key slot as it supports two lanes or two links of by one PCI gen, in this case, three. So that looks good. And if we go down to the actual module here, we can see the PCI version is two. And then the maximum length is one, which is what we'd expect. And this is just fine, PCI Gen 2, I believe, I could be quite wrong here, but I think with PCIe Gen 2 by one, we'd get about 4,000 gigabit per second. So two and a half gigabit should be totally fine. Now, if you do this on Linux, it's a little bit different, or at least Debian in my case, um, you can use LSPCI and then do dash VV for more verbose. And then when you find the device you're looking for, you should be able to see the link capabilities, I believe, and then also see the link status and you can look at the width and that'll show you whether or not your M.2 E key slot actually supports PCIe or not. So in this case it does and we magically already have this setup. Well, not magically. Windows was running for a second and probably already has drivers ready to go. So we can go to device manager. And if we go to network adapters, we can see our Realtek PCIe two and a half gigabit family controller. So I'm gonna get this set up really quick, make sure it's on the right static IP and stuff for how I have my two and a half gigabit network set up. And we'll test this out and see how fast it actually goes. All right, so I've got everything set up. I'm actually on my NAS here and I can go down to, for example, this Elite Desk 800G3 Mini and try copying over this video and see what happens. And there we go, we're not quite getting the full two and a half gigabit, but that's probably just a read speed limitation from the NAS, if I had to guess. Let's try doing a bigger file. I don't think that's gonna help at all, but we can try. Yeah, so if we try copying this, we're getting close to that 300 megabit per second, but we're definitely getting two and a half gigabit per second. We're getting better than gigabit per second. All right, so two and a half gigabit clearly works. It's a little bit awkward here, just hanging out the back but it does work. So now I'm gonna move on to the 
Coral TPU. Several days later. Okay, so I'm back. It's been a few days actually because I messed up my Grub bootloader by running Windows and then switching back to Linux. So I got that fixed thanks to Chris Titus Tech. Appreciate it. Um, but yeah, we have Debian back up and running and all the setup for Forget was done off camera just because it was going to take a lot of figuring out. Um, I'll probably have some of that on here. But basically, I set up Portainer so that I'd have an easy way of running Docker Compose because I'm not as familiar with actual Docker Compose, but I set up Portainer and then set up a Docker Compose or a stack in Portainer for Frigate following their guide. And then once I had that running, I set up my cameras to work with this. And yeah, it seems like everything showed up. If I actually go into, oh, I can't really go into it from here. Yeah, I can go to Frigate and go to my entry here. And this hasn't been running, so there's not a whole lot, but down here in snapshots, we can actually see it detected me walking up to my front door. I'm actually kind of curious. We'll see if the audio audio works. I have a feeling the audio is not working, but hello, I'm a person. Did it work? Let's find out. All right, let's see if that worked. Hey, looky here. Now it didn't seem to pick up that there was a dog there, but it did pick up person. All right, so we have the Coral TPU actually working and I actually got dun, da, da, da. Oh my goodness. You try opening a bag on camera, all right? There we go. I actually got the SATA adapter here, so I'll put it up where you can see. So NVMe E to dual SATA. And we'll see how well that works. Let's try it out. All right, I need power. I have the $5 power supply right here. Let's get this guy hooked up. It should be fine for now. It should be enough. Okay, so I've got a whole bunch of stuff hooked up over here. We have a return of the $5 power supply. I've got it hooked up with the old, not sure if you can see this, but the paperclip test here. I'm gonna go ahead, run power. It's a little bit janky and I'm probably zoomed in a little tight to be able to see it all, but you can kind of see Got my hard drives here plugged in. This is, this is so janky, man. Okay. And hopefully nothing explodes. Drives have power. Turn the system on and hopefully we can just get a boot into Debian. This is my temporary fix to get into Debian. Uh, why is the display being weird? Is it like a power thing from the other power supply? What's going on? The display is being weird. So we're into Linux, but we're getting weird display stuff. A few minutes later. Okay, so I'm SSH'd in here. Wait, we can actually see that we have our two two terabyte drives here. And they seem to be recognized. I always forget this. All right, cool. So as you can see in the screen share I'm probably showing you, I was able to mount a file system on one of these drives at least and copy some files over and it worked. So yeah, but this seems to be causing some weird issues with the display. As you can see here, there's, there's no video coming out. So I'm not sure. I guess I could try a different display port. That doesn't seem to help either. You're kidding. Wow. <laughs> okay, hold on. Oh shoot. Oh, okay, that may have been a bad idea. I'm pretty sure I tripped my AFCI breaker, but it did in fact, when I shorted ground on the two cases, the display actually worked. So yeah, some sort of grounding issue, I assume with the hard drives and this computer, but technically it worked. Might be a little tricky trying to sort out a project using this, but it technically seems to work. So three for three, maybe, I guess. Anyway, I think that about wraps it up for this one. Once again, this may not work on a lot of PCs. It really just depends on the motherboard. So use something like hardware info to go and check and see with the Wi-Fi card plugged in to see if it has those PCIe lanes or if it's using some other 
technology. And still probably no guarantees that this stuff will work on any given motherboard. I think I got lucky that it happened to work with this one, but your results may vary, but it's still cool, especially on a small computer that you could potentially do some more cool things with it. Thanks to that extra slot, like especially the Coral TPU thing is really cool. I think being able to set this up to be a simple NVR with a boot drive, a TPU, and then maybe an extra SATA drive for some storage, that could be really cool. I think that could be a great use for something like this form factor. So I think that's about it. Thank you guys so much for watching, especially patrons and members. I really appreciate the extra support, but even for you guys that don't, no worries. I appreciate you for watching this and liking it and doing all that great stuff. So seriously, thank you guys so much. I love getting to do what I do. Stay curious and I can't say, and I can't wait to see you in the next one.